Atar is my guide, Atar is my guide, by the grace of Allah, Atar is my guide. My murshid has changed millions of lives, the prophetic sunnah, he is revived. The leader of the Sunnis, he is our pride, by the grace of Allah, Atar is my guide. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah The Prophet of Mercy the peace of our heart and mind, the most generous and kind, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, O people, indeed, the person to receive quick relief from the worries and accountability on the Day of Judgment will be that person who would have recited Durood Sharif and Salawat upon me abundantly in the world. Sallu Ala Al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel We welcome you to this silsila, discourses of Attar And what better way to start this silsila Than to introduce who Attar is But before this, remember Make as many good intentions as possible If you make any good intention or the more good intentions you make, inshallah ta'ala, you will gain more rewards. Any good action which is done without any good intention, there is no thawab, there is no reward for this. So as much as possible, make as many good intentions. I will listen to this piece of information. I will educate myself and I will practice upon it for the pleasure of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Attar, who is he? He is a spiritual guide. Shaykh al Tariqat, Amir Ahl Sunnat, the Honorable Hazrat Allama Mawlana Abu Bilal, Muhammad Ilyas al Tar Qadri Razvi Ziyai, Damat Barakatuhum al Aliya. He was born on the 26th of Ramadan al Mubarak, 1369 Hijri, corresponding to 1950 AC, in Karachi, Pakistan. His forefathers lived in a village called Kutiana in Junagar, India, Hind. His grandfather, Abdul Rahim, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, was renowned for his piety and his excellent character, his akhlaq. His parents migrated to Pakistan after its independence. Initially, they lived in Hyderabad, Babul Islam, Sindh. But later, they moved to Babul Medina, Karachi. Amir Ahl Sunnah Damad Barakatumul Aliyah, his father, Haji Abdul Rahman Qadri, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, he was steadfast on Islamic values and guidelines and was indeed a pious individual. He would often walk with a lowered gaze and he knew many ahadith by memory, by heart. He never had a greedy desire to gather the fleeting materialistic things of this dunya, of this world. He, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, was a murid, a disciple in the esteemed Qadriya Sufi spiritual order. When Amir al Sunnah Dam Barakatumul Aliyah went to Colombo, Sri Lanka in 1979, there he learned that the people held his father in high esteem and regard because his father had served the grand Hanafi Memon Masjid in various capacities in Colombo. Amir al Sunnah his maternal aunt's husband, during a conversation, reported that, I saw with my own eyes that whenever your father recited the Qasida Hothiya, the bedstead that he would be seated upon would rise and actually levitate. It would remain suspended in the air. Glory be to Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amir Ahl Sunnah. Damud Barakatuh Mul Aliyah was still an infant when his pious father 
went for Hajj, for the Hajj pilgrimage in 1370 Hijri. The temperatures had soared at Mina and many people passed away, many people died due to this heat wave. Amir Ahl Sunnah's father, Tam Barakatumul Aliya, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, was amongst those who were affected by this extreme heat in Mina. He too passed away soon afterwards in Dhul Hijjah 1370 AH. We belong to Allah and we are to return to Him alone. By the grace of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, Haji Abdul Rahman Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali was fortunate enough to have passed away during the holy Hajj pilgrimage. The Prophet of Mercy, the intercessor of the Ummah, the distributor of bounties, the owner of Jannah, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam said, whoever goes for Hajj and he passes away, he dies, then thawab, reward of performing Hajj will be recorded for him till the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Whoever goes on the pilgrimage of Umrah and he dies, then reward and thawab of performing Umrah will be recorded for him till the day of judgment. Furthermore, whoever leaves for jihad and dies, then the thawab, the reward of a ghazi, that is the one returning victoriously after a battle, will be recorded for this person till the day of judgment. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. In another narration, it is reported that the beloved and blessed Prophet وسلم, said, whoever embarks for Hajj or Umrah and he dies, he passes away, he will not be called for Hisab and accountability, nor will he have to face the assessment and he will be told, enter into Jannah. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Amir Ahl Sunnah, his Elder sister reported, after the death of our father, I saw a dream in which my father was accompanied by an old saintly person with an extremely enlightened face. My father took my hand and he asked, My dear daughter, do you know who this exalted person is? He is the beloved and blessed Rasul Wasallam. Then the Rasul Wasallam said very affectionately, You are very fortunate. Amir Ahl Sunnah Damal Barakatuhumul Aliyah, whilst talking about his childhood, once he remarked, When I was still a child, as I walked towards the balcony, a thought crossed my mind. All children, they call somebody father or daddy or dad. Their fathers, they pick them up, they hug them, and sometimes they buy them candies, sweets, sometimes they even purchase toys for them to play with. I wish that my father was here so I could also embrace him and receive his affection. I was disheartened and grief-stricken. I began to cry my heart out. My elder sister rushed to hold me her orphan brother in her arms and began to console me. Upon the death of his father, his only brother, Abdul Ghani, also passed away in a train accident. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A muballigh, a preacher reports, the Honorable Amir Ahl Sunnah Dawud Barakatuhumul Aliyah once during a conversation, he said, My elder brother passed away on the 15th of Muharram al-Haram, 1396 Hijri, in a train accident. Afterwards, on the first Monday of the month of Ramadan in the same year, my elder sister asked me some unusual questions. One of them was, Did you visit the Qabristan, the graveyard yesterday? I replied, yes. The reason for the surprise was that she only knew that I used to visit the graveyard on Sunday evenings. I thought perhaps she must have thought 
that I had not gone to the graveyard since I was home on Sunday after Maghrib. My sister said, No matter how hard you try to conceal the truth, our late brother has informed me in a dream as to how many times you go to visit the graveyard and that you engage in the recitation of Na'at Sharif, which is poetry in the praise of Rasulullah You engage in Na'at Sharif there with other Islamic brothers. She further said that our late brother explaining in the, her dream the circumstances of the qabr, of the grave. That he had also told her, when I was laid in the qabr, in the grave, a small animal rushed towards me. I flicked it away with my leg. Then a terrifying torment moved towards me. It was about to engulf me. And my brother, his Isra al-Thawab, that is, Ilyas al-Tar, Tamad Barakatum al-Aliyah, his Isra al-Thawab, the donating of reward to other Muslims, his Isra al-Thawab, it appeared to me and came to my rescue, subhanAllah azza wa jal. It then obstructed the progress of this torment. The torment approached from another angle, from a different direction, but the Isra al-Thawab, Again, it blocked the torment from this direction as well. The torment tried to engulf me from all directions. But the Eastern Thawab guarded me from all its attacks. Finally, the torment retreated as it could not find any way. I am thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal that my brother Ilyas benefited me even after my passing away. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amir Ahl Sunnah's mother was a very pious lady. She bore many, many challenges in life and despite these hardships, she raised her children with good morals and well-grounded religious Islamic values. Amir Ahl Sunnah, Tamad Barakatum al-Aliyah, his life, his personality are a testament to this very fact. Shortly after the death of his brother, his mother also passed away on the 17th of Safar, 1398 Hijri. People often lose their patience, their sabr, in such trying and difficult times and they indulge in complaining much. But despite such trials, Amir Ahl Sunnah Tamad Barakatuhum Al Aliyah remained patient upon losing his loved ones. He wrote a poem on, as a plea to the beloved Prophet وسلم, entrusting his matters to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal and his last Prophet Muhammad It is as follows the translation Clouds of sorrow are hovering The heart is engulfed in worry Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam You are the source of comfort and peace Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam My father has left I was only an infant The brother has departed in my youth I did not even see the happiness Because my mother had passed away Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Order the winds of Medina To blow on my awaiting heart Turn the sorrow setting sun Into a gleeful dawn of spring Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Raging storms have wrecked my ship to pieces. Rescue me, Ya Rasulullah. I am drowning in the high seas. O oh, my beloved Rasul, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amir Ahl Sunnah, Dambur Qatumul Aliyah, has said, My dear mother, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Aliha, passed away on a Friday night. By the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, she recited the statement of faith, her Kalima Sharif, and repented, made tawbah, before passing away. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Her face was illuminated after her body was bathed. When her, her body was bathed in, for the funeral services, the ghusl, the area where she took her last breaths remained fragrant for many days. The scent was distinct, especially at the time of night when she had passed away. On the third morning, I had brought some rose petals that remained fresh until the evening. 
I adorned her grave with those flowers. A unique scent emanated from those roses, which I have neither smelt before nor afterwards. This aroma also remained in my hands for several hours. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon her. Rahmatullah ta'ala aliha. Furthermore, Amir Ahl-Sunnah Dhamburqatumul Aliya has said, This grace is indeed an outcome of being a humble servant of the beloved and blessed Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Whoever is bestowed with the special grace of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam attains spiritual and physical enlightenment and then others around the globe and then others around the globe continue to illuminate from this enlightenment. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. By the grace of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, she Rahmatullah Ta'ala Aliha was blessed greatly by Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal to have testified the Kalima Sharif and repented, made tawbah before passing away. The Prophet of Mercy, the intercessor of the Ummah, the distributor of bounties, the owner of Jannah, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi wa Alihi Wasallam has said, the person whose last words are La ilaha illallah Meaning the whole Kalima Sharif He will enter into paradise Subhanallah Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad The Prophet of mankind The peace of our heart and mind The most generous and kind Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa Has said If Allah Azza wa wills goodness for somebody Allah Azza wa bestows understanding of the deen upon him Amirul Mu'mineen, the brave Sayyiduna Ali, Karamallahu Ta'ala, Wajhahul Kareem, has stated that the Noble Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, whoever adopts averseness and dislike for the materialistic world, Allah Azza wa Jal grants him ilm and knowledge without him having to seek it nor learn it. Allah Azza wa Jal grants him assistance to tread on the right path without any apparent means for him to do so. Allah Azza wa Jal also bestows him basira, which is foresight and distances him from jahalat and ignorance. Attar is my guide, Attar is my guide By the grace of Allah Attar is my guide My murshid has changed Millions of lives The prophetic sunnah He is revived The leader of the sunnis He is our pride By the grace of Allah Attar is my guide